Gracious, most merciful, all praise due to Almighty Allah and peace and blessing be upon his servant Muhammad, his family, his followers, upon your family and mine. Ladies and gentlemen, heaven and hell. The last time we met, I talked about the ropes that will pull us from paradise to hellfire. And I said they are set on the day of judgment, hell will be brought to focus and it will be pulled by 70,000 ropes. And each rope will be pulled by 70,000 angels. And then I said, what are the ropes, the invisible ropes that are pulling you and I? away from hell, from paradise to hellfire. Away from paradise to hellfire. <clears throat> and these ropes are all different. One of us will have a rope wrapped around him or her that's called alcohol. Another one, another rope will be drugs. Another rope will be gambling. Another work will, rope will be adultery or fornication. Another work will be riba. Another rope would be lying, cheating, beating up people, stealing. There are millions and millions of ropes that are there waiting to be wrapped around us to pull us away from paradise to hellfire. And I said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. He said, this day I have perfected your religion for you. الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نَعْمَتِي وَرَدِيتُكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ الدِّينَ This day I have perfected your religion for you, perfected it, completed my favors upon you, and chosen for you Islam as your religion. In this religion of Islam, you and I exist. And those of us who are not in Islam, I invite you to come to Islam, and it's easy. If you want to become a Muslim, you want to convert to Islam, just repeat after me. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, I hereby believe that there is no other God but Allah and Muhammad. Peace be upon him is a messenger of Allah. Let me repeat that. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, I hereby believe that there is no other God but Allah. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Allah. If you repeat that, and you're not a Muslim, and you embrace Islam, all the sins that you have are gone. And it's like you're born a new sinless. You're better than myself and the millions of Muslims who live in, are born in Islam or already in Islam. The minute you accept Islam, all the sins are gone. And when you do good, and a born Muslim does the same good. You get twice the amount of blessing as a person born Muslim. Why? Because you 
came in to Islam. You give him double the rewards for the same good as a Muslim born Muslim. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam tells us that the Holy Prophet sallam, said, if you say 100 times every day, all glory and all praise are due to thee, O Allah. 100 times a day. Subhana Rabbi Al-Ala. Understand every word of that. Subhana Rabbi Al-Ala. All glory and all praise are due to thee, O Allah. 100 times a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you the sins, even though they are like the foam of the sea. That means you got mountains of sins. Allah will forgive you. Because when you start saying this, it pulls you to paradise. Another thing is that when the Imam in Salatul Fajr, Maghrib and Isha, three times a day, beginning the first prayer in the morning, the one after sunset, and the one before you go to sleep, Salatul Isha. When the Imam says, Waladalin, the angels say, Amin. And if, the, and if you say, Amin, loudly, loudly is the Sunnah, not quietly, loudly. If you do say it quietly, you do not obey the Sunnah of Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Imam should say, Amin. Then he has the Amin. There is an Imam that follows the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If the Imam does not say Amin loudly, that Imam should be fired. Because that Imam is not obeying the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he's no Imam. Fire the Imam that doesn't say Amin loudly. He's doing us a disservice. Imagine if you say Amin. And the Amin matches the Amin of the angels. All the sins are gone. Who has a right to deny us that? Who has a right to deny us that? Do not let the Imam deny us that right. Fire the Imam. For he's an Imam in name and not in deed. An imam should follow the Quran and Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many things, there are many ropes that will pull us to hellfire. And today we talk, inshallah, about a few more of those ropes. The first question on the Day of Judgment is, is your salat in order? The first question. Is your salat in order? Not what your name is. Not um, who your father was. Not that did you die rich or poor. No. It's not. The, the first question is not uh, anything except is your salat in order? Five times a day salat. Every day of our lives, since from the time we reach puberty to the time we die, five times a day, Salat. Not three, not two, five. <clears throat> How should we pray? Are there ropes that shaitan can wrap around us in our salat that pulls us away from paradise to hellfire. Away from paradise to hellfire. What are the ropes shaitan wraps around us? We gather for salat. The muazzin gives the azan, the call for azan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله That's the other end. And then the Imam gives the signal to the Muazzin to give the Iqamah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Hayya ala salat, hayya ala al-falat. قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أمر أوردن بلال رواه البخاري رواه المسلم موتى إمام مالك ترميزي أبو دعور النساء أحمد بن حنبل أول محدث سيد Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered Bilal to repeat the wording of the azan twice and the qama once. Any muazzin who repeats the word of the qama likes the azan is disobeying the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and hellfire awaits that muazzin. Let me repeat. Salat is important. And the second article of faith after declaring that there is no other God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, the second article of faith is the salat. Giving the azan, the qama like the azan, is destroying the call of assembly to worship. The prayer has begun, prayer has begun, but the, the, there are some people that give the iqama like the adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah. No, this is wrong. Anyone who call you to prayer, and give the iqama like the azan, you tell him he's not following the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And hellfire awaits him. But we have many bhaji and kuskus leaders. Our leaders are not even worth their weight in dust. They lead us astray. They are the most evil of people that live on this earth. The hadith of Rasul Sallallahu said, the imams will be the worst people that live on the earth toward the end of the day. Towards the end of this existence, the, um, the leaders, the Muslim imams will be the worst people on the face of this earth because they twist this religion and they give us to they feed us a twisted form of Islam. And this is major, 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 major sin. This is a rope that pulls us to hellfire. Wudu. What is our is there a rope in wudu that can pull us to hellfire? There's a rope that diminish the blessings in wudu. What is that rope? Do things without full participation. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, our salat, sometimes only 10% is accepted, sometimes only 5%, sometimes 20%, sometimes 30%, sometimes up to 90%. That's all. 
What causes us to get only 10% and 20%? I will tell you in a moment. Let's take wudu, and you will probably get the answer from my explanation of wudu. To get the full blessing of wudu, what is wudu? We wash our hands three times. You wash your face three times. Wash your, rinse our mouth three times. Wash your hands to the elbow three times. Pass water over the head once, over the, into the ears once, and never do this. This is not the sunnah. Putting your, wiping your neck is bidah. Kullu mukhnasatin bidah. Kullu bidatin dolala fil kullu dolalatin fin nar. Every innovation is a misguidance, and every misguidance is hellfire. Said Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do not ever wipe your neck. This is an innovation, and this is a bidah, and this leads to hellfire. You do not best Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not do that, so you do not best him. You make wudu, you wash your hand three times, not four. You can wash it once, you can wash it twice, or maximum three times, but never four times. Do not best Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do not say I'm going to do it four or five times to get myself cleaner than Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, maximum three times, you do that. Because besides the, little, the cleanliness of the hands, there's a spiritual implication of it all. When you wash your hands, if you just say one, two, three, and wash your hands three times, you get blessing, you, you make your wudu. But you only get half or less than half of the blessing of the wudu. Allah knows best. Why? Because when you wash your hands, you must imagine that all the sins that you have, you committed with your hands are washed away. When you're washing your hands, one, two, three, imagine all the sins that you have committed with your hands are washed away. And this, then you get the full blessing of that action. When you, we run, rinse our mouth, imagine all the sins our mouth have committed are washed away. Our, when you spit the water out, it's all gone. Then you get the greater blessing for that action of rinsing the mouth. When you wash your face, once, twice, or three times, never four times, never best Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then, and you imagine all the sins your face have committed, what kind of sins can your face commit? In your face have the eyes, and your eyes can look at haram, and all the sins your eyes have committed are washed away. Then, you get more blessing for that action. When you wash your hands, all the sins your hands have committed are washed away. Then you get more blessing for that action. When you pass the water over your head, from front to back and forward again once, once, and then through the ears, Then all the sins of head have committed are washed away. All this and in, in the on the head, you have the brain. So all the evil thoughts are washed away. You have the ears. All the evil things we've listened to are washed away. All the sins our ears have committed, our brains have committed are washed away. When you wash the feet, same thing. All the sins your feet have committed are washed away. Feet take us to haram places. Feet does haram things are washed away. Then, when you are purified, you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salat. 
Do we make wudu that way? If not, make a niyyah today, inshallah, to make wudu that way. And then that will be a mighty rope that will pull us to paradise and away from hellfire. If we do not have the mental accompaniment with the physical action of anything we do, we are cutting short ourselves of the blessing of that action. Let me repeat that. If we don't have a mental accompaniment for a physical action of anything we do, we are cutting ourselves short of the full blessing of that action. And so we stand for Salat. And when you make Salat, always anything you say, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And you, can, you start your wudu. And you can say, Alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah who has just purified me. Whatever you want. This, this religion is magnanimous, it's, it's huge can accommodate everything within the load of Qur'an and Sunnah. You say, in the name of Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you make your wudu. If you forget, it does not invalidate your wudu. If you say it, it strengthens your wudu. In fact, we should say Bismillah ar-Rahman for any action. <coughs> We stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We hear the adhan and we hear the iqama. And the iqama is called and we form lines. The lines must be straight facing qibla. And you get, fix your gaze at the spot you're going to make sujood. And you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You stand with devoutness. Some people, when they stand for salat, they stand like they're going to a fight. They want to fight with Allah. They put the legs, spread the legs, and Allahu Akbar. You stand like you fight. No. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Your feet, Normally, you stand with your feet like this, your toes facing away. When you stand in Salat, your toes must face Qibla. From your head to your toes, you face Qibla. So your heel, when you stand like this, your heel cannot touch the heel of your brother. When you stand like this, your heel can touch the heel of your brother. Shoulder to shoulder, ankle to ankle. No space. Line straight. And the Imam should straighten the line. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara hatta ta'alamu ma taqulun. O you who believe, do not approach salat with mind befogged, but understand all that you say, all that you say in prayer. Do you understand every word that you say in prayer? Many of us don't. So our salat is deficient. 10% is accepted. If you don't understand what you're saying, how sincere is that what you're saying? You must understand every word, every single word. We should start with Surah Al-Fatiha, understand every single word of Surah Al-Fatiha. When we say Allahu Akbar, we must understand what it means, Allah is the greatest. Where we look, how should we look, how should we posture. Hadith of Rasul Sallallahu says it is haram, haram to put your hand on your khasar, your waist. 
Do not put your hand on your waist. Many millions of people put their hand on their waist because they follow some twisted madhab. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, do, says Rawah al-Bukhari that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbid us, forbid us from putting our hands on our waist. Why? Because shaitan puts his hand on his waist. And if we want our prayers to be accepted, our salat to be should we copy shaitan or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Listen carefully. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his hand on his chest. His hand was between his, on his forearm, between the wrist and the elbow. Allahu Akbar. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did that. And he forbid us putting our hand on our waist. Because shaitan does that. Should we follow shaitan? Or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. Palm facing tibla. Allahu Akbar. So when we make salat, if we put our hands on our khasar, our waist, then we put a rope around us that pull us away from jannah to hellfire. If we do the takbir like this, then we put a rope around us to pull us away from hellfire to jannah. Which way should we do? Which way should we follow? What rope should we, the one that will follow the sunnah of Rasul or against the sunnah? Simple. If you put your hand on your khasar, your waist, then you follow shaitan. Because shaitan put his hand on his waist and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't, don't put your hand on your waist. La muhtasara. Do not put your hand on your waist. Ladies and gentlemen, this show, forgive me from blowing my trumpet, is an amazing show. No other show tells you about Islam like this show. Encourage others to watch it. If somebody, you encourage others to watch it, and they watch it, and they benefit, you get the same amount of blessing. Listen carefully. May Allah reward you as only Allah can. Please, support the show $5 a month, a dollar and a quarter a week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.